call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is now 6 p.m. If you would, please stand as Mr. Kidd leads us in the invocation to Mr. Husband and the Pledges of Allegiance. If you'd like to, I'd, I'd invite you to join me in prayer. Now your heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, we just uh, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your grace. Uh, dear God, we just thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy in our country. And uh, this past week, as far as uh, honoring our veterans, Lord, we just thank you for those that have served and those that are still serving uh, so that we may enjoy these freedoms. Dear God, just uh, be with us tonight. Uh, thank you for the hearts and service of Dr. Brown and Mrs. Haynes. And thank you for uh, our new board members. Dear God, we just uh, thank you for, for everybody in this room and their hearts, for, for our students, their, their just passion to serve our students. Lord, we just uh, ask that you continue to be with us and guide and direct us to, to serve those students. This time of year, Lord, we, uh, we ask for protection. Uh, just uh, put your arms around our students and, and protect them, Lord, and our, our staff and our teachers. And we pray for all of them as we enter this holiday season. Uh, again, just uh, help us have a, a good and productive meeting tonight. Just guide and direct us through our decision-making process. And uh, just be with everyone as they travel home safely. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in honoring our country. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our state, honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Husbands. Item 2A is approve order canvassing returns and declaring results of the November 14th, I'm sorry, November 4th, 2014 Board of Trustees general election. I have asked Mr. Husbands and Mr. Kidd to serve as the canvassing committee for the board. If those board members would now go with Mrs. Gladys to the boardroom and canvass the note, the vote, the votes. And when they return, one of the board members uh, can make their announcement.
work sessions are between the hours. May have a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little President Sanders, members of the board, the November 4th, 2014 Board of Trustees election results have been canvassed by a quorum of the board. I move that the Board of Trustees approve the order canvassing the election returns and declare the results of the election to be for position one, 19,681 votes for Melanie Bush and 15,927 votes for Kim Lejeune. For position number two, 26,985 votes for Ray Sanders. And then for position three, 7,099 votes for Jason Millsaps, who actually withdrew from the race. 14,552 votes for Skeeter Hubert. And 10,484 votes for Carol Hamilton. A second. All right, there's been a motion and seconded made. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. All those opposed, same sign. All right, the motion passes. Congratulations to our new board members. Dr. Stockton. <laughs> Dr. Stockton, would you present a certificate of election to each newly elected board member? All right, before we move on, uh, I'd like to go to the podium and make a few remarks. If I could, please ask Dr. Mel Brown and Ms. C.J. Haynes to approach the podium with me. having my back to you, but I've got to read this. <laughs> Dr. Brown and Mrs. Haynes, on behalf of the board, I want to express our sincere appreciation for your service to our district. Board members serve multiple year terms, and I know that each of you served multiple terms. Serving on the board takes many hours of service, and our financial compensation is zero. But our rewards are not the financial rewards, it's being able to see our students be successful. I know as board members, both of you have served countless hours helping our district to be the very best that it can be. 
Your participation and dedication to our students, to the faculty, the staff, and to the taxpayers has been seen in your monthly school visits, the multiple graduation ceremonies, the many school events you've attended, and the many hours spent preparing for and attending school board meetings. You have both helped to manage the growth of our district in a positive and financially healthy way. It has been both an honor and a privilege to serve with you and to have been a part along with you in the team of eight. Tonight, we wish to say an humble thank you for all you've done for the Conroe Independent School District. Your service will never be forgotten. Ray asked me for five minutes, Mel. You uh, remember okay, that part? Well, she's got me night time right here. Uh, but uh, Ray asked us, and I tried to jot down a few things because I knew I'd forget them. Uh, but let me say, he mentioned the low pay. The nice thing is they double it every year. So, uh, uh, and I think the rewards we receive far outweigh what it would for monetary benefit. But I uh, want to say thank you to the staff always found you supportive of our board. Uh, uh, the, uh, you always, when we had tough questions, you always uh, handled them well. We never asked for information that wasn't, didn't become readily available. Uh, and it's a whole lot easier to be a board, board member when you got that kind of support from the staff. Uh, I'm, uh, to those of you who are on the board that I worked with over the 11 and a half years, uh, let me say I appreciate that. I've disagreed with every one of you at one time or other, uh, and uh, and I'm still going to come, uh, still be fighting to get the name of the school board policy changed, and I still have a name I want to bring back. So whenever you name school boards, uh, schools again, I'm going to be back up here with my. Uh, nomination that uh, you've rejected so far, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be back. Uh, uh, thank you for making me a part of the team, and uh, I'll see you around the community. Thank you. Dr. Well, this is pretty hard, but first of all, I'd like to thank all of those people that have supported me um, so that I could serve for almost 11, a little over 11 years. And then secondly, thank you to the teachers, the students, the administrators, the staff, Dr. Stockton, for making CISD the most outstanding district. And I think it's probably the best district. And then lastly, thank you to the new and the current um, school board members, thank you for serving, and I hope that you continue to serve with your heart and your passion. Thanks. Item 3B, Statement of Elected Members and Oath of Office. The next item on our agenda is the Statement of Elected Official and the Oath of Office for New Trustees. We are very fortunate tonight to have Judge Lisa Mychalk here to swear in our new trustees. Judge Mychalk is the judge of the 221st District Court. She was just re-elected herself to her second term in office. Congratulations. And she's here along with her husband, and her t she has two sons in CISD. Hunter is a junior at the Woodlands High School, and Sam is a seventh grader at McCullough. Her oldest son is a graduate of the Woodlands High School and is a junior at Oklahoma State University. 
Because I am being sworn in for my second term this evening, I will turn the meeting over to Mr. Husbands, our first vice president. Thank you, Mr. Sanders, Judge Machok, uh, and our new trustees. Please come to the center of the room. The Texas Constitution requires that before the oath of office can be administered, each new elect, newly elected trustee must make the statement of, ele of, of elected official. Judge Machok will administer the, the statement of elected official to uh, new trustees as a group, and then she will administer the oath of office to each trustee separately. After, this, after the statement of uh, elected official is administered, when each trustee is being sworn in, any family members or other special individuals are welcome to come up and stand with the trustee. Judge Machak, please proceed with administering the statement of elected official. Contributed or promised to contribute. Contributed or promised to contribute. Any mon money or thing of value. Any, any money, money or thing, thing of value. Or mm -hmm. promised any public office. Or promised any public office. Or employment. Or employment. For the giving or withholding. For the giving or withholding. Of a vote at the election. Of a vote at the election. At which I was elected. At which I was elected. Or as a reward. Or as a reward. To secure my appointment. Or confirmation. or confirmation, whichever the case may be. Whichever the case may be. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Would you move to sign here? And I'll take you up one at a time. If you have any family members you'd like to have come up. I think we have some special guests that want to come up. Yes. I'll be uh, Ms. Bush, you first.
Judge Mike Chalk, we want to thank you for um, every time we call you, you ask, you, you come just because we ask. And we appreciate that, appreciate your support of us, and, and certainly appreciate taking your time out of your busy schedule to come and to celebrate. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item. 3C, Special District Recognition, National Merit Scholars. Dr. Stockton. Okay. I will ask uh, Dr. Curtis Null, Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education, to come and introduce our very special guests. All right. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. I'm proud to be here this evening to recognize a fine group of young men and women and celebrate their significant academic accomplishments. Tonight we are celebrating seniors who have been recognized for their performance on the PSAT that was taken during October of their junior year. Before we introduce our honorees, I would like to thank those that have helped them reach this point. With us this evening represent our high school campuses are our principals. We have Greg Colshan, Tommy Johnson, Jeff Stickler, Mark Merle, Mark Weatherly, and Susan Caffrey. If we could give them a hand, they're back there high now. Additionally, I would like to recognize our coordinator of guidance and counseling, Ms. Sherry Sunderman, is here with us this evening. <clears throat> By offering a rigorous and varied curriculum, our campuses do an outstanding job of preparing our students to be successful. I'm pleased to announce that just last week, the College Board named Conroe ISD to the AP Honor Roll, joining 547 districts across the nation and only 27 others in the state of Texas. The AP Honor Roll recognizes districts for outstanding participation and performance in advanced placement classes. I'd like to thank our great teachers and administrators for their fine work with this honor. While we're extremely proud of the work of our campuses, we understand that the journey of these high achieving students starts at home. Will the parents, grandparents, and guardians with these fine students please stand so that we can honor you at this time. We will now introduce three groups of students that have been identified by the College Board and the National Merit Scholarship Program. These awards are not mutually exclusive, so a student may be recognized in more than one group. And I will tell you that these are all very busy students, so I will read some names of students that could not be here tonight uh, that are involved in other activities on their campus. Our first group. The College Board's National Hispanic Recognition Program identifies academically outstanding Hispanic and Latino high school students. Each year, the NHRP honors nearly 5,000 of the highest scoring students from the approximately 235,000 Hispanic and Latino juniors who take the PSAT. At this time, we'll bring forward our National Hispanic Scholars. Jacob Berger. Daniel Canales. Camila Castro Rodriguez. Kyra Chavez. Heather Clark. Camila Cortina. Lydia Cascuela. Rebecca Cruz. Gina De La Guardia. Michael Epinette. <laughs> J. 
Javier Irana. Jorge Marcus Flores. Ignacio Garcia Casas Tron. Rachel Goodman. Sydney Hernandez. Joseph Nath. Jade Hostetter. Alejandro Jose Villasenor. Kayla Kelly. Dana Lawrence. Andres Machado. Ryan May. Austin McDowell. Matthew Mendoza. Amanda Mirande. Maria Paez. Maria Paz. Joseph Ramos Mata. Jaime Riverte. Maria Rodriguez Bruno. Davi Sanabria. Deborah Sanchez Roberto Mateos. Gabriel Tapman. Samuel Thomas. And James Zaccone the second. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these are our National Hispanic Scholars. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will now move to our second group of uh, recognition. The National Achievement Scholarship Program is an academic competition established in 1964 to provide recognition for outstanding African-American high school students. Of the more than 160,000 students to enter the National Achievement Program each year, a small group of about 1,600 are named semifinalists. 
and have the opportunity to advance into the scholarship competition. Our National Achievement Scholar semifinalists this year are Preston Innie. and Jordan Franklin, who could not be with us. So Preston, this is your moment. <laughs> Congratulations. And now for our final group this evening. The National Merit Scholarship Program is an academic competition for recognition and scholarships that began in 1955. Of the approximately 1.5 million entrants into the competition each year, about 16,000 students are notified that they have qualified as National Merit semifinalists. These National Merit semifinalists represent the top 1% of scores in their respective states. It should be noted that the state of Texas has the seventh highest qualifying score in the nation, making the accomplishments of these young men and women even more impressive. Our National Merit semifinalists this year are John Andrews, Gretchen Bella, Ryan Bakoven, Matthew Caffett, Andrew Cahill, Wenting Chang, Abriana Dolphy. Connor Doyle, Nathan Bezuza, Horatia Fang, Jordan Franklin. Colin Gaffney, <laughs> Molly Harris, <laughs> Jennifer Heller, <laughs> Derek Hill, <laughs> Dylan Kovar, <laughs> Stavros Tanidis. Seth LaRue, Paul Lauritsen, Juliana Law, Haley Meyer, Benjamin Miller, Jared Nicevolt, <laughs> David Ratliff, <laughs> Meredith Riggs, <laughs> Jason Shan. Emily Shin, Douglas Snyder, Kennedy Sterling, Micah Taylor, and Tess Volansky.
Ladies and gentlemen, our National Merit semifinalists. Honorees, I will remind you that Ms. Wood may want to take some group pictures with you in the hallway uh, here as you exit. But thank you very much for being here. Yeah. What a nice thing to have hand parents. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you're going to have hand parents, you might as well be over that. All right. I was going to say, now look where I'm at these. All right. Y'all got it. Yeah. 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 Everybody on the table. Okay. All right. Next item on the agenda is item 3D, citizens participation. Ms. Ferris, is anyone registered to address the board? Yes. All right. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resol resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for the presentation. Delegations of more than five must be must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Ferris, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Mark McCloy. I'm a little shorter. <clears throat> Dr. Stockton, President Sanders, School Board. My name is Mark McCloy, and on behalf of, um, <clears throat> sorry, and I'm the president of TSTA Conroe, a uh, Conroe Independent School District employee teacher. On behalf of TSTA Conroe, I would like to congratulate the incoming school board trustees and also thank the outgoing members uh, for their hard work and dedication at Conroe Independent School District. Our association represents hundreds of employees throughout this district, and I'm here to speak for my members on issues and concerns that we do not feel are being addressed at the campus level. We appreciate the district's administration's involvement in addressing recent issues that have come to the forefront of this school year. However, we have seen increasing demands on teachers' time, including the infringement on our state-mandated 30-minute duty-free lunch and, a 400, and the 450-minute planning time every two weeks. Teachers are required to come in uh, for meetings before the start of the day and after the school day ends. Our conferences have been cut and more meetings have been employed. Many teachers are stressed and feel that they are always being asked for more at the expense of their precious family time. My members are under pressure and that can be attributed to the overemphasis of the STAR exam. The focus of the STAR takes away from valuable teaching time. For example, we have a benchmark at the beginning of the school year, at the middle of the school year. Most of the teachers are required to spend a day reviewing for each exam, and at least a day administering the exam, and still another day going over the exams. Then we meet at a, uh, another meeting to discuss the exams. We operate on a culture of cuts and more cuts at the state level. 
<clears throat> which has made our school school districts, many of them small, devastated for financial uh, concerns. Right or wrong, Conroe has uh, seen to cut too, uh, and rather the children have suffered. We need to certify teachers as a co-teach model rather than engaging in facilitates the support model where non-degree paraprofessionals are used. We need to put more money in the hands of teachers and employ good teaching standards as well as retain, retrain those who lack behind. Uh, Dr. Kim states, we do not need the, to be very, we do, excuse me, that we need to be very careful at any efforts to replace testing with investments on, within educators and that the best students learning results in always coming from the investing in the status and autonomy of our teachers. I will end this by addressing the bus drivers' concerns. Uh, we have far too few, and we have far too, in East County, we have too few routes, causing uh, a, a backlog in bus drivers in the East County for sure. Uh, we need good bus drivers, and when we want to get good bus drivers, we need to pay them. Uh, and pay them for their good because there's not one person that I talk to as a teacher that uh, relishes the thought of having 70 kids behind us and we cannot see them. Uh, they are good, dedicated uh, Conroe ISD employees and they need to be treated as such. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Okay. All right. Item four is the consent agenda. Does any board member wish to pull any items out for discussion? If not, do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion or comments? If not, all those in favor and all those opposed. Motion carries. Item 5A, curriculum and instruction, Milam Elementary's formerly improvement required plan, target improvement plans for Austin Elementary and Burnham Woods Elementary. Dr. Stockton. Okay, at this time, I'll invite Dr. Kathy Gibson, Assistant Superintendent for Elementary Education, to present this item. Thank you. Good evening, President Sanders, board members, and Dr. Stockton. Tonight, I'd like to share with you some information on three of our campuses. Prior to doing that, I'd like to make some introductions of three of our uh, administrative staffs from Milam Elementary, Burnham Woods, and Austin Elementary. I'd like to start with Milam Elementary and introduce to you the principal, Mrs. Patricia Gonzalez, and her two assistant principals, uh, Mrs. Sean Braden and Mrs. Kelly Garvin. I'd like to introduce Dr. Christine Butler from Burnham Woods Elementary, our school principal, and her two assistant principals, Mrs. Natalie Butler and Mrs. Stacy LeBriar. And Austin Elementary, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Serena Pearson and her two assistant principals, Mrs. Katie Moe and Mrs. Michelle Allen. I'd also like to introduce three directors. This doesn't represent the entire team that supports all of our schools, because you know that we have an incredible CNI department and an incredible administrative department, and everything in this district, every department supports academic achievement. But the uh, the directors that have been involved directly in these campuses are hiding behind uh, the column is um, this is Julie English, director of assessment and evaluation, and. Over way on the other side, sitting with Milam Elementary, is Dr. Pam Zoda, and she is our Director of Federal Programs and Grants. And then our Director of Elementary Education, Mrs. Shelley Winkler, and she is our current Dr District Coordinator of School Improvement. <clears throat> I'd like to share with you some information. I was here last year about this time. You've seen this before. You know that you've seen these four indexes. I'd like to focus on index two. And in, in 2013, I shared with you that this is our student progress index. And this index is the index that we historically and over time are known for adding value. And that's what this index uh, represents. It's been long history in Conroe. You know the academic successes of our school district. And in, in, in 2013, the target was 30 percent 
and Mila missed it by two points. And as a result of that, we participated in the Texas Accountability of the Intervention System, or the TAY system. And as a result, uh, last year this time, Dr. Zoda uh, was the district coordinator for school improvement. We had a professional service provider. His name is Dr. Jay Staley. He worked with the campus. Basically, that's an outside consultant. We went through some steps. We implemented strategies. We studied the data. We monitored progress. And we're going to be in this, this, this process for two years. Last year this time, I said I'll be back this year to share what this campus has done. This campus spent last year enthusiastically strengthening their instructional program. We, provide, we provided, we customized and aligned our district resources to Milam, to their needs. We provided staff development. We identified staff de development as we do for all of our campuses. Uh, they added additional learning time. They have, they participate in our professional learning, uh, our, our PLC process, which basically focuses on academic success and collaboration of teachers. And they piloted some software programs that help our ELL students and our struggling learners. <clears throat> As a result of that, I'd like to share with you what they have accomplished in the past year. Uh, the target was 33. Uh, and they earned a 42%. I'd like to congratulate Myla Miller. <laughs> you know, the job is not done. We're just, we're well on our way. They will continue their journey. We have uh, very similar strategies that we will do. Uh, Dr. Zoda will, um, will provide support at the district level. She will be that lead support along with all of us. Um, we have customized again with uh, working in collaboration with this campus. And we would like you thank, to thank you for all the work that you've done. Uh, Mrs. Gonzalez, you know the most important person on the campus is the building principal uh, for all of your instructional leadership skills. And um, Sean Breeden, Mrs. Breeden. Uh, as well, and Mrs. Garvin, your school year is well underway, and we're very proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to share with you Burnham Woods. Uh, Burnham Woods here, again, our student progress. Uh, they missed it by two points, and we have a similar, as we do with, with all of our schools, we have customized and aligned the resources. We have identified uh, supports. Um, I too would like to share with you that this campus is enthusiastic. Uh, as you know, our administrative team goes out and visit, visits all of our campuses during the academic conferences. They are Dr. Stockton's conference. Uh, we had a phenomenal conference, very, um, very energizing and focused on uh, our best practices and um, providing enrichment and support for their student body. And thank you, uh, Dr. Butler, for your leadership. You too. Uh, I know that you're, you're, you are well underway. And I'd like to mention that her assistant principal, Mrs. LaBriar, has come to us uh, from Montgomery ISD. And we welcome her to our team. <laughs> Austin Elementary missed uh, uh, this target by one point. Uh, they too are well underway. Uh, some of you may may know that Dr. Pearson, this is her first year at Austin Elementary. She came to us from Spring ISD as an experienced principal for five years. Um, she has brought an incredible energy and focus to this campus. Uh, she is um, totally positive, quite, quite frankly, 24-7. And um, it is really her, this campus is, is, is also well underway. We again have provide res provided resources for Austin Elementary. Now I would like to mention that the two that Dr. Uh, excuse me, that Mrs. Winkler is the, is the uh, lead for these two campuses. Uh, she has been on these campuses, has worked closely. We, she does walkthroughs, visits core team meetings. Here again, we do that at all of our campuses, uh, but they too are well underway. And thank you all for all of your hard work. 
Some of the highlights that we do in terms of um, all of our campuses, and as you know, this is an ongoing process, and staff development is a big piece. You've, you have seen evidence of that through our CNI department. We have one of the strongest departments. I would probably put them up against any department in the state of Texas. Um, we are always focused on building staff, student, and leadership capacity. That is, that is what we do daily. Uh, we do believe that our principals are, 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 are our instructional leaders, and we focus on keeping our academics in the forefront daily and hourly. We monitor uh, all the time. We monitor formative assessments. As a matter of fact, we have a phrase this year that we monitor eight to, <laughs> eight to ten minutes, meaning I'm checking for understanding. I'm checking for understanding. You know, I can look around and... And, 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 and if you were my students, I'm, I'm watching your eyes, I'm wondering if you're listening. And, you know, we do that, we recommend about eight to ten minutes. Uh, sometimes we have them hold up little boards, raise their hands, all kinds of things. Um, our common assessments are a very strong part of our uh, instructional program. And then our benchmarks as well. Our benchmarks, uh, we have... We, we have seen that they are strong predictors of star, um, of star um, success. One thing I've seen over the years, too, and something that we've held true to in Conroe ISD is that we focus, we've kept our focus always on curriculum and instruction. And I think you know that the techs have changed and the assessment have changed both at the same time. And if you've been in education for a while, you know that we had tabs, teams, TOS, TAX, and STAR is now the fifth iteration of the uh, standardized testing movement that actually began in 1979. And I can tell you that, uh, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I did administer the, tab, the TABS test as a fifth grade math teacher. And so I have lived through all of the platforms. This is a great platform. It hits it hits students that are passing. It focuses on adding value and each student progressing. It looks at all of our student groups and how well they are performing. And we also look at how are our students going to be ready post high school to go out to the college of their choice or, the, or whatever trade that they may choose. So um, thank you. and. Um, concludes our presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gibson. You're welcome. Oh, okay. Your hand. At this time, we'll need to go to a public <laughs> hearing. So, if Mr. Right. Sanders, if you'll adjourn the board meeting. All right. We will adjourn the board meeting for our public hearing. Public hearing. Okay. This time, we're in public hearing. If anyone has any comments about the previous presentation, please come to the podium and state your comments, uh, state your name, then your comments, and, and we'll ask you to keep it to about two minutes. Anybody? That concludes our public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back in session. I would like to say, I would like to say it is a very challenging system. Um, Mr. McCloy, it, it, uh, it's a challenging system that, that uh, challenges our kids. I do believe, like Dr. Gibson, that it's gonna prepare our kids like never before for an ever-changing world. Um, it's it's a system that makes our kids think, and um, it, it makes us all think <laughs> in, in how we present information, how we check for understanding, and, and uh, the progress of our students. But we do think it's going to benefit our kids in the long run. Um, we thank you for the schools that are here tonight, and we appreciate your efforts and, and look forward to great things. So, so thank you, and uh, thank, thank you to all of you. We do appreciate you. President Sanders, uh, this looks like to be an action item. I don't know the board took action to approve it. It's an action item to approve it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So moved. We have a motion. <coughs> Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion or comments? Not all those in favor and all those opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Gladys. Keep us right, huh? All right. Item 6A, 2015-2016 school calendar information. Dr. Stockton? I'll ask Dr. Hines to come present this information, just for information. Just for information. 
Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, as Dr. Stockton just mentioned, this is an information item. Uh, and, and basically, I come before you this evening because it's that time of the year where we start the calendar process. And uh, this is uh, the, it really happens most of the, the discussion is at the district level, planning and decision making level, which is comprised of teachers, administrators, parents, and community representatives. And they're responsible for developing a recommendation to bring to you for the 2015-2016 school calendar. Now, the district level planning committee will develop one or more draft calendars for the 15-16 school year, and we will put it up on the on our website. We usually leave it up there about a month, and we take comments uh, during that time. We share those comments with members, and we discuss the feedback, uh, and then we 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 try to come to a conclusion at our uh, January meeting in order to bring to you in February a recommendation for a calendar. Uh, some of the highlights that I'll just point out, uh, the first day of instruction as uh, is in the uh, Texas Education Code, a school district may not begin instruction for students for a school year before the fourth Monday in August. And so for us, that's going to be Monday, August the 24th, 2015. So that's I always get that question every year. Probably the number one comment I get on the inter, on the web is, "Start earlier," you know, and and, and we can't. Um, we're going to have you uh, during the uh, <clears throat> consent agenda. You approved two early release days to continue in our calendar, as well as uh, two staff development days. So instead of having 180 days of instruction, we we will have 178 days of instruction. So there will be 178 school days in that calendar. Then we're required to, uh, we're not allowed to have a holiday on a testing day, and we are required to put two days in the spring semester for makeup for inclement weather. And so that'll be the other part of that calendar. And really, I'm here tonight just to share that we're going to start the process. And if you have any feedback or anything you'd like me to bring to the district level committee to make sure we look at. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Any, any comments? Yes. Dr. Hines, have you? looked at the days available and, and assume, assuming that we approve the same number of days off, the same week off in November, so on and so forth, if you looked at how many days split between the semesters there would be, yes, if sir. we did the same number of days, even if they're not the same day? Correct. Yes, sir, we have. And that's actually tomorrow I'll bring a draft calendar to, for, the, for the committee to look at. And it, it too, will have an imbalance. Oh, I'm sorry. Of, I rushed you. Uh, <laughs> no photo here. But for us, for next year, if we did it the same way, it would be uh, 79 days in the first semester and 99 instructional days in the second semester, which was um, pretty much that's exactly what we had this year. And that's if we do the same thing. And that, of course, will be one of the topics for discussion about where to end the semester. Well, as much as that distresses me, I've got to tell you I've had a lot of feedback from teachers about the week off, the break, the winter break, whatever. I mean, not just Christmas, but the but the full week in, in the in the in the fall. And I know that exacerbates that problem, but it is by far one of the more popular items to be discussed. Let me put it that way, or to complain about, or to request, whichever, it, it, whether you're doing it or not. So. I want to encourage you with that, but that's short of that. Uh, I think y'all do a fantastic job, and with the with the planning committee. Anyone else? No. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Thank you. We'll have it. We'll try to have a recommendation for you in February. Okay. Thank you. Um, 6B is capital improvements update, Dr. Stockton. Uh, Ms. Foster, if you'll come and present that item, please. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to give you an update tonight for our capital improvements, which are our construction projects that are in progress currently. Starting with Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus, uh, this project is currently on schedule. Uh, it's scheduled to open for school at the end of the next summer, so it'll be for, uh, starting open in August for the 15-16 uh, school year. What you're looking at here are the structural components for the new front entry. Uh, the uh, construction of the new front entry is was well underway. The, the anticipated completion uh, should be early in the spring semester. So we'll, we'll take over this portion of the building well before the summer. As you can see, we're working on the in interior systems uh, for the new building additions. 
Uh, as we move around the building, you'll see uh, the, the structural components for the additional uh, features uh, that we're adding on to the building. Uh, we're adding on several classrooms, uh, four science labs, uh, two art labs, culinary lab, and some additional administration space and expanding the library. You see here though, the work is, is well underway. Moving to Vogel Intermediate, uh, the addition here is an eight classroom addition that is uh, a little bit ahead of schedule. We've reported at the last two board meetings that uh, we're, we're pushing the contractor to complete this project so that we can turn it over for use for the spring semester. Uh, as you can see, the grounds and the exterior of the building are, are coming together. The inside of the building, this is the week where we are we're activating the air conditioning systems and then the actually boiler startup is this week. Uh, so that'll that'll release the ability to install the carpet, the ceiling tile, and the other soft materials to go within the building. As you can see, it is uh, the, a, a stack of uh, tile there on the floor ready for installation. I don't have pictures of the LED project, uh, but the update for the LED project we started in July. If, uh, uh, for our new board members, we're uh, retrofitting the oldest T12 fluorescents uh, with LED technology, which is actually skipping, skipping a generation of fluorescent. Uh, the project is scheduled for approximately 15,000 light fixtures. Uh, as of tonight, we should be sitting right at 14,000 fixtures installed. Uh, by the end of this month, we will complete the, uh, the original contract. Um, the post-installation inspections from the utility company, which qualify us for the rebates that are available, from the utility provider are underway. I mean, they're happening as we speak. At this point, we've we visited uh, the Woodlands High School. Uh, we visited Connor High School, Connor High Ninth Grade, Caney Creek High School, uh, Oak Ridge Elementary, uh, because we could com uh, complete the T12 renovation there. And they're currently at McCullough Junior High School. So we've tried to tried to attack our largest buildings to, to get get those uh, buildings uh, with new lighting systems. The good news I have to report is we're nearing the end, so the contingencies and the, uh, the budget, project budget, has been well managed, so we're going to realize some savings for, from things that we anticipated that did not uh, come to pass. So we anticipate spending all of those savings and contingencies on additional light fixtures. Our estimate at this point is pushing the limit uh, or pushing the total number of fixtures uh, to almost exactly 16,000 by the time we're done. So the, the good news is the, the base model, which is what we need to do to get the uh, rebates from the utility providers is well underway and on schedule and we're going to uh, work later into the year to expand that as far as we can take and stretch our dollar. Remind me the energy savings uh, the payback is the uh, the payback based on the base contract uh, is 3.78 years okay. so we're actually going to better that uh, by some margin uh, by putting more energy efficient fixtures in for the same money. But yet the the life expectancy of the LEDs is what? The, the fixture package that we're purchasing carries a 10-year parts and labor warranty on the fixtures themselves. It sounds like it's going very smoothly. I, I substituted at McCullough Junior High School a couple of weeks ago, and I heard one of the teachers <laughs> tell somebody else, I went home last night, and I got here this morning, I had new lights. That's what <laughs> happened lights. overnight. That's great. Very good. All right, any other comments? Foster. Thank you, Mr. Foster. I appreciate Thank it. You. All right, seven, item 7A is transfer of unassigned fund balance to the health fund. Dr. Stockman? Mr. Cox, if you'll come present that item, please. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, I recommend the Board of Trustees approve the attached mm -hmm. resolution authorizing the transfer of $3.2 million of unassigned fund balance to the health fund. The fund balance transfer is required to properly fund uh, the district's self-funded health plan as of August 31, 2014, our year end. Uh, the approval of this item will generate a, an adjusting journal entry to, the, to our year end uh, financials to bring the health fund positive as of August 31, year, year end. The $3.2 million uh, will fund the $2.7 million deficit in the health fund plus 500000 for the Affordable Care Act transitional reinsurance fee, which is due in December. Uh, it should be noted that we implemented a new health plan <clears throat> design effective September 1st. It's the Aetna Memorial Health System Aff Accountable Care Organization in an effort to control the costs and improve the financial performance of the health fund. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, the, in September and, and October, we still had runoff from the prior plan, so 
September and October haven't been the kind of results we hoped for, but uh, we hope to see an improvement, and we expect to see an improvement in November. So, uh, I should also point out that the 3.2 million uh, is surplus from our 13-14 budget, uh, and after the transfer, the projected unassigned fund balance <coughs> is uh, approximately 95.6 million versus our high-end target of 94.8 million uh, as of August 31, 2014. I recommend that you approve this transfer. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion or comments? Not all those in favor and all those opposed. The motion carries. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Cox. All right, item 7B, financial reports. Dr. Stockton. Okay, this time I'll call Darren Rice up, our Executive Director of Finance. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. First, I'd like to start out with uh, we have completed our 14-15 uh, uh, official budget book. Um, it is available online. We will send you a link to that. But if any, if, if any of you would like a hard copy, we'll have that available for you, too. So just let me know. And with that, I'd like to talk to you about the financial statements for the districts for the month of October. Uh, these statements include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look, we'll look at is a balance sheet. And we always like to look at our cash and investments each month. And as we can see, our monies, the majority of our monies, are invested in, in earning us uh, earning us some good return. So the next statement we'll look at is our in income statement. It shows our revenues and expenditures and fund balances for the district. If you look under the state programs revenue, we've received about 75% of our state funding already. They pay us early. We will not receive another state payment until August of next, of next year. So <clears throat> if we look at our, our local revenues, uh, starting to get some property taxes coming in. Uh, that's the majority of our, our local revenues in the general fund and debt service. <coughs> Child nutrition, of course, our revenues come from food sales and self-funded from our premium contributions. We can also look at uh, how our expenditure, expenditures are broken down by uh, function. Uh, Self-funded insurance, as Mr. Mr. Cox said earlier, September and October uh, months uh, weren't as good as we we're expecting with, with the new plan, but realizing that we had the, the, the rollout from the previous plan uh, is there. So currently 750,000 revenues under expenditures. But, the, but on the good side, uh, our wellness centers having good participation, we're averaging about 660 uh, in those programs, so, so that's looking good. And, and looking at the month of November, just so y'all know, uh, claims are looking like they're going to be in line. So we have heard some, some whisperings about some maybe some big claims coming in, but it looks like we're going to be a lot better shape. Our $109 million bond transition plan, uh, our projected forecast is currently about $105.8 million <coughs> projected forecast leaving us with a contingency of about $3.2 million in the plan. And if you look at the bottom, you can see where we're reflecting that we've sold all of our 2008 bond referendum now, so all $527 million there. Our investments for the month. At the end of September, we had uh, $220 million invested. At the end of October, $224 million invested. Uh, the wham of our pools, our Capital One, our, our short monies is one day. And the yield for those is 17 basis points. Our longer maturity uh, items, U.S. Treasury notes, we have some Fannies and some Freddie Mays in there. Uh, also some CDs, 649-day um, WAM, yielding about 57 basis points, so pretty good return on those items. So for the total portfolio, our WAM is 115 days, yielding 24 basis points. And our, our benchmark, the 90-day T-bill, is at one basis point. So outperforming that very easily. And that is all. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. We appreciate it. All right. Item number 8A is executive session. A closed session of the board will now be held 
on matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by sections 551.072 and 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be either at A, this public meeting upon the reconvening of this public meeting, or B, at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. The time is 7.12 p.m. The board is now in open session. The time is 8.27 p.m. The next item on the agenda is nine action on executive sessions. We'll we, we actually have an agenda item coming on after that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's great. 10A? 10A. 10A, I apologize. 10A, consider revision, <laughs> sorry. Consider revisions of local board policies B, Q, B, and F, D, B. Dr. Stockton? Uh, Mrs. Gladys, please. Thank you, Dr. Stockton and President Sanders. We're bringing to you as information tonight revisions, recommended revisions to two local board policies B, Q, B, which deals with the campus level planning decision making committee, and F, D, B, which is the district's intra district transfer policy. The revisions uh, that we are requesting to B, Q, B, simply reduce the number of business members that we require campuses to obtain for their district level or their, for their campus level um, committees because it's very hard for some of them, particularly in the remote areas of the county, to get business uh, people to serve on theirs. We said that they need a minimum of one. It was two. They can have more than one if they can get more than one, but we're trying to help them out by reducing that number. The recommended revision to FDB really brings it into line with the revisions you adopted last month for FDA, the inter-district transfer policy. We're making uniform the application date to July 1st and making the um, students that move, whether it's within the district or out of the district, they can remain for the rest of the grade period before they would have to leave that campus. All right. And that's an action item? It is not. It's information I'll ask in December for you to adopt them. All right. Thank you, Ms. Gladys. All right. Item 10B is board member rules of conduct. Dr. Stockton? Uh, I'll turn this over to Mrs. Gladys also. You all have reviewed, I know, those rules of conduct that were developed by the board several years ago, and some of you have already signed your um, agreement to follow them. It is your discretion to do that, that our students do it, our employees do it, and Years ago, the board decided that they too would like to have a code of conduct that they would follow, and that's what has been given to you. So, if you haven't given me your sheet, if you want to sign and pass it down. All right. <coughs> We're pretty good at passing papers. You're good, y'all. Like right. little children. That's right. All right. Thank you. And item 10C: reorganization of the board. Is there a motion? Mr. President, I have a motion. Uh, I move to nominate John Husbands as president, Scott Kidd as first vice president, Datron Williams as our second vice president, and Melanie Bush as our secretary. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion or comments? If not, all those in favor and all those opposed, and the motion carries. Since there being no further meeting, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Time is 8.30 p.m. Thank you.